Are you the one who called me? Spoker. Can I call you Kate? You can call me gone if you don't tell me exactly what you meant on the phone. You have 15 seconds. <laughs> Something funny. No, no, just ironic, making time a condition. I I'm sorry. Look, mister. Do I know you? No, not yet. But I know you. You said that on the phone. You also said something about my fiance, about saving a life. That's the only reason I'm here. Well, that and maybe because I'm an idiot. You know, how do I know you're not a stalker? A serial killer? You know what, this is nuts. I'm going home. It was your doll, not Meg's. What do you know about my sister? You were six. Your sister Meg was four. We were playing with dolls by the creek when your favorite, Cherry Fairy, rolled down the embankment. Meg ran after it. She stumbled, fell in. She couldn't swim. You told your parents it was Meg's doll, that that was why she ran down to the water. You were afraid that if they knew it was yours, they would blame you, hate you, send you away. You? How could you? I never told anyone ever. Ever's a big word. Please, Sid, I'll explain everything. I promise. Please. Who are you? I'm nobody. Nobody important anyway. But I have something to tell you that is important. Something that if I'm very, very lucky, could change everything. What can I get you, ma'am? Oh. oh, nothing, nothing for me, thank you. All right, what? You mentioned Charles on the phone. Is it his life that's in danger? No, Kate, the life I'm trying to save is yours. Your fiance is what I'm trying to save you from. Look, I know this is hard for you and it's gonna take a hell of a leap of faith just to hear me out, but please, just listen. A quarter, so what? Look at the minting date. That's the year it was when I got up this morning. I'm from the future. Look, pal, you need help and I don't need this shit in my life. Put comfort in the pills? The picture in the locket stopped you. It was after he first hit you. You went to the motel and you brought the pills Dr. Harrison prescribed to help you sleep. You were going to swallow them all, but your hands kept shaking. You dropped the bottle and when you went to go pick it up, you knocked over your purse and out rolled the locket. The latch was open and there was Meg's face. You were afraid that if you died, that Meg's memory would die with you. So all you did that night was cry. A lot. How do you... How do you know all these things? Who the hell are you? Like I said, I'm nobody. Not yet, anyway. And I know these things because you told me. I was... Well, sort of confidant, a shoulder to cry on. But I can't help anymore if you won't believe me. Will you please just listen? Talk. In my time, I work at a research lab. I'm kind of a cleanup guy, you know? The kind that's like wallpaper, the kind nobody really notices. A janitor. Hey, I'm smart enough, I just, I didn't have much chance for an education growing up. That's not important. Um, I was emptying out a trash bin when I saw these two eggheads in the lab uh, putting a rose on a platform. They adjusted some numbers and dials and pushed a button and the rose disappeared. They went to go look at a picture pinned to a nearby cork board and they started laughing and clapping each other on the back like they just invented fire in the wheel at the same time. <laughs> I snuck back into the lab that night and 
I went to go look at the picture. It's a famous picture in my time, one every school kid's seen. It's an inauguration picture where the new president is waving an American flag, only his handler's screwed up and it's an old flag and so there's only 50 stars. Talk show hosts got mileage out of that one for years. But there was something different about the picture now. On the podium next to all the microphones was a rose. Those eggheads had found a way to send things through time. So you... Yeah. Like I said, I'm smart enough. I'd watched what buttons and dials they used. But why? Kate, you're wearing blinders. You want to believe that Charles loves you, that he's the perfect guy, and you're ignoring what you already know, that he's a self-important prick, an animal. He's hit you once and he'll hit you again and you'll let him. He'll put you in the hospital and explain broken bones as accidents. He'll beat you up outside and beat you down inside. He'll brag about his infidelities and rub them in your face. And you'll take it because you think that you deserve it because you didn't save Meg. I've seen it, Kate. I was there. You don't owe Meg your pain. Could you have saved her even if you tried? What if the roles had been reversed? What if Meg couldn't save you? Would you want her to live in misery, drowning in guilt? Or would you want the sister you loved to move on, to be happy? Okay. Even accepting the microscopic possibility that you're not insane, that what you say is true, why do you care? Because I can see the fire that's in you now, and I've seen the ashes it turns to in the future. Okay, you have one chance to keep that spark alive, if you have enough courage to take it. You could have had that coin made at a novelty shop. How can I believe you without something real, some kind of proof? I told you that you said Charles liked to brag about his affairs, right? So where's Charles today? He's in Milwaukee on business. We were supposed to pick out a silverware pattern for the wedding, but he said for me to do it alone. He said his meeting was more important. Why? See that booth over there? Go ask the couple what time it is. That's it. Just do this one thing and I swear, I'll never bother you again, ever. So I slip the guy 50 and he lets us right in. And the method, uh, rubes in line were all slack jawed and he must have thought we were movie stars or something. Kate, uh, uh, Kate, uh, what are you doing here? Hello, Charles. How's the weather in Milwaukee? I'll tell you what's, what's going on. Oh, uh, shut up. Uh, Katie, Katie, Katie. Uh, it's just a change of plans. Damn that... straight, there's a change of plans. The wedding's off! And I swear to God, um, if I ever even see your face again, you'll qualify for first soprano in the church choir! Hey, where's the guy who's sitting here? You saw him too. Scott, I thought uh, breathing alcohol fumes all day giving me a brain fart or something. I mean, I was looking right at him and he just... It's like a bubble pop. That's impossible. I know. He just vanished. It was like he never even existed.